In 2009, Dave Brailsford launched his British pro cycling team and announced to the world an historic ambition to win the Tour de France with a British rider. No British rider had ever won the Tour. But Dave's grand ambition did not end there. In a sport mired in doping scandals, he determined to do it on pedal power alone. I've always been a firm believer that you can win the world's biggest bike races clean. It would be no mean feat. For years, accusations of doping and performance-enhancing blood transfusions have dogged the sport. Dave's never held back from telling the world what he thinks of the cheats. If you're going to take your blood out into a bag and you're going to store it and then you're going to have somebody to bring it along to a race or to a training camp, you're going to have to fly it somewhere, you're going to have to get in your room, you're going to have to reinfuse that blood and go to all of that hassle. The only reason you're doing it is to cheat. At the core of his war on drugs are what he calls marginal gains. All riders are expected to sign up to Dave's way of thinking. Let's really identify the simple things and not only do them well, let's do them better than anybody else and, and, and then make that the norm. Achieving this the Brailsford way is a science, not an art. It's all about the detail, finding a 1% margin for improvement in everything the team does. Over three years, Dave has assembled a hand-picked team of specialists to realise his grand ambitions. Psychiatrist Dr Steve Peters, who believes he can help riders manage their passions to combat psychological pressure. Sports scientist Tim Kerrison, a stats cruncher for whom the route to victory can be plotted on a graph. It gives you a rough idea of, of where we're going to finish in the tour from the powers I'm producing for my body weight. All I train to is numbers, really. As well as eight mechanics, four doctors, two physios, a resident chef, and a permanent bus driver. Each has a role to play in the pursuit of the ringmaster's marginal gains. Their single goal, to make sure the riders have no other concern than riding their bikes. It's just about doing the simple things really, really well. You can't really control whether you win or not. But what you can do is you can control whether you're the absolute best that you can be. And if you are the absolute best that you can be, that improves your chance massively of winning. If any of them aren't doing their jobs properly, um, it, it directly uh, affects us. The bus driver, for example, let's, if, he, if he gets lost getting to the finish one day, it means it's just a longer, longer time for us to wait to, to start recovering for the next stage. If you look at the bus as an empty box, what would you put in that space um, that when the riders get on that bus from the end of the race to get back to the hotel, how can they be better recovered and get a competitive advantage over the opposition? It's not just a means of getting elite athletes from A to B. It's a sanctuary, a restroom, a mobile HQ. Most of the time they play music on the bus. We get everything from schoolgirl disco to wacky way out stuff from Michael Barry and yeah, Christian Canise with his dark rap and <laughs> yeah, you get it all on here. You get it all. This is all for a reason. You know, it is all for marginal gains. It's, it's to the, put the riders' heads in the right place. I mean, if they get off the bus and they're chilled and relaxed, and you know, then I, I've done my job, haven't I? So. Each day, an advance party of carers and physios vacate one hotel and rush to the next to get the rooms ready for the riders' return. Two, two, two. two, two. Yeah. You know, we open and then we prepare the room or put the suitcases in. It's no ordinary valet service. It's a daily deep spring clean, including a wholesale replacement of the hotel's standard bedding with team issue linens laundered daily. One big thing we've looked at over the last three years is sleep quality and uh, we've used a, a variety of bedding systems, but basically we, we transport mattresses and uh, hypoallergenic bedding so that the athletes have consistent quality of sleep. They know, you know the bed they sleep in each night feels the same, it is the same. The team have their own resident chef, Soren. With each new day, he commandeers a new hotel kitchen. His menus, like everything else, are carefully designed for marginal gain. I have never ever served ice cream for the riders. My, my job is not to serve, excuse me, shitty food. That's the whole thing about marginal gains. <laughs> have lots of little things and 
on their own, they probably don't make a great deal of difference, but add them all together, and that's the difference between this team and, and our rivals. And if you can learn to manage that and recognise it, that's a very, very powerful thing. Bradley Wiggins has held the lead for 13 days straight. All he must do is stay out in front to complete one of the most significant crusades in British sporting history. This is where all of the marginal gains need to add up. A gain from training, from psychological support, from equipment, the team bus, from recovery, nutrition, and the combined efforts of all of Dave's staff. Come on. Come on, canes, canes, canes. You were almost home and dry, Bradley. Loads of time to play with, you're killing it. Come on. Come on, 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 come on. But you've just seen the winner of the Tour de France cross the line. Four minutes, 13 seconds, oh, shit. Time for Bradley Wiggins. A percentage gain here, a percentage gain there.